Hey beautiful people, welcome or welcome back to my channel. And if you don't know, my name is Brittany, but I go by Honey Bee. And today I just wanna share a story time with you of why me and my family don't celebrate Easter. And we haven't celebrated Easter in a number of years now. And I want to ex actually explain like why we don't celebrate Easter and what we do instead. So for about 12 or 13 years, I, for about 12 or 13 years, the Lord started exposing things to me about a lot of things. And during that time is when I learned about vaccines and some of the things that are in vaccines. I learned about um, the, the truth about Christmas and also just a number of other things. And also I learned about the biblical feast. So I was learning a lot during that time and God was still just continuing to give me wisdom, give me insight, which I, I needed in that time. Cause I was, I was, I was yearning to just know like, okay, God, like I want to know more of you teach me. And he started teaching me. And then I found other brothers and sisters that already either knew the truth or they were coming into the truth. I actually had friends that never celebrated any holidays like Christmas, Easter, and things of that nature. They never celebrated it growing up, but they celebrated the biblical feast. So I started learning more about that. And as the years progressed and I got more serious about my faith with the Father and just my walk and my relationship, I decided that this is something that I really wanted to do. I wanted to do my best to be obedient to God and my and, and and my love him the way he wants to be loved and that's keeping his commands back in 2011 is when i actually learned about pagan holidays and just all the things that we celebrate it's like they're rooted in paganism and my church taught that so these were things that i was able to learn in my church and the further i like i said continue to grow my relationship with god the first time I ever celebrated Passover was in 2012. And I just want to share that you may not know what Passover is, but it is a feast in the Bible, um, in Leviticus. And it's first talked about in the book of Exodus. And this is right before the children of Israel left Egypt. And, and I'll actually put the scriptures um, on this video. So that way you can go back and you can read and just see what, the early church was keeping and also why it's so important to keep Passover. I, I kept my first Passover and it was such a wonderful experience. And the more I read about the word of God and continue even on reading into the New Testament and how the disciples and the, the, the forefathers of the faith literally were keeping this biblical feast. They literally kept this feast right up into the death of Jesus. And that night, um, night <laughs> so in the bible at night it marks the new day so the day that they kept passover that evening was the start of a new day and that day was the day of passover which we know that jesus is the passover lamb jesus is our passover and the beautiful part of it is that he kept that with his disciples with the 12 even though he knew judas was going to portray him betray him he kept that feast, that 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 special day with his disciples. Now, if this is something that Jesus is doing, there is no mention of Easter at all. Nowhere in that passage, there was no mention of Jesus even keeping Easter. And that for me was the biggest thing that said, hey, like that was a red flag for me. Like, hey, wait a minute. Like if Jesus is keeping it like, hey, and then not only that. If you go back into the book of Exodus and it talks about the feast, even in Leviticus 23, I believe it talks about the feast and it talks about them being a perpetual covenant. And I'm not sure if you don't, if you're not, if you're not sure what, what perpetual means, it means continual. This is something that never ends. So this day shall be a memorial and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Exodus 12, 14. The fact that Jesus kept it the, the day leading to his crucifixion, like 
that to me says a lot. He not only kept Passover, but he was also the Passover lamb. And going back to the story of in Exodus, when the children of Israel was leaving Egypt, that the night before they left, they made unleavened bread and they also um, had to kill lamb and put the lamb's blood on the doorpost. And that way the deaf angel, which this was the last plague right before they exited or ex made their exodus from Egypt. So I, I love how that depiction of the lamb that they had to sacrifice to be saved from that death angel. Jesus is the same lamb that we see in the New Testament. And God is just so amazing. And I love how like those correlations, we can see like God's plan from the beginning of the Bible, even up to the end. And Jesus being our Passover lamb, that is super important to me. Like it's super important to me. The thought that even made me make this video was me having like a conversation with God in the kitchen. And he told me, he was just like, think about it. He was like, even unbelievers keep Easter. And that was the same thing he told me about Christmas. If it was really about me, if Christmas was really about me, if Easter and these, these, these pagan holidays were really about me, why are non-believers keeping the day that you are celebrating for me? Think about that. Because the unbelievers are not celebrating the feast of the Bible. Because a, a lot of Christians don't even know about the feast of the Bible. The, even believers don't even know about the feast of the Bible. So just, you got to think about it. Like there are no... There are no unbelievers. Non-believers are not keeping the feast, but non-believers do keep Easter and Christmas. And that was a thing, like, again, that was like a red flag. Like, it was like a ding, like, hold on, Lord, like, something ain't right. Like, this is, this is different. And that was what changed my mind. That was what changed my heart. And I was just, I, I started watching videos like Truth Unedited. Um, but before... I, I, so I started watching videos back in my early time of just like coming into this truth and reading the word for myself, like passion for truth. Jim Stately, hands down, was an amazing teacher in showing these things. And another another great another great source was um, Truth Unedited. He shares a lot of truth also. And these are the people that I were that I was watching to just gain knowledge and stay encouraged just on my walk as I was pivoting and 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 pulling away from the things that I, I grew up knowing to be true. And Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And there's only one truth. They're not multiple places of truth. Like he is the truth. And we, we were built on that foundation and we, we decided to stray away. Literally, like, you know, the God's chosen people just decided to stray away. And that's why the judgment was so harsh and it's continuing to be harsh because no one is coming back to the father. No one is coming repenting. And I'm not saying that, you know, no people are wrong for doing these things. A lot of people, like I said, honestly, just don't know. But once you hear it, you're held accountable for the things that you do know. So now that you do know that Easter literally is a pagan worship of a god um a goddess um, um a pagan worship of a goddess in times where they were doing some of the most debaucherous things to be honest with you so the to know that easter the practice that believers something that that, that believers keep religi re religiously year after year after year after year for for thousands of years right has been it's been rooted in paganism that has to hurt the heart of the father like it literally has to and to know that we're living in an age where knowledge is literally all around us it's literally at our fingertips like we will be held accountable for the things that we either cover our eyes or turn a blind eye to or turn our backs to like god knows what we know like he knows that so this is not like a message to come down on anybody or anything like that but just understand that easter was never meant for us to keep there that's not of god that's not of the bible but passover is and it literally points back to the father it literally points back to jesus being that sacrificial lamb for 
us. It points back to him being the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. You can't find Easter that, that even has that close to that type of origin. There's no origin of Easter in our faith. But Passover is. That was the first. That was the and, and that and that and I and I'm not now that I'm thinking about it, that was the first thing that God did, even in the garden with Adam and Eve. Go back and read it, where they had when when they sinned, that they were covered, like God covered them with skin, like animal skin. An animal had to be sacrificed for them to be clothed after they sinned. And then we see with the children of Israel, God's chosen people, a lamb had to be slain for death to pass over. Just like with us in Jesus, he had to sacrifice. He had to be sacrificed. He had to be our Passover lamb. He had to be that so that death could pass over us. And we would live with him eternally. So we're not, we're not apart from him. We're not away from him. But we have eternal life. So just the fact that. I, I just love God for that. And me and the kids and my husband. Like I even when I met my husband, I told him, I'm like, hey, we don't do Christmas. We don't do Easter. We don't do all that. Like we keep the biblical feast and if this is something that you want to do, like, okay, feel free to be a part of it. But I definitely don't want to mingle once, like, now that I know the truth. And the kids absolutely love it. I can't wait for Passover this year. It's coming. It's actually um, going to be starting after. I can't wait for Passover this year. It's actually going to be starting right after my birthday. So, I'm, I'm just excited for Passover this year to be with my family and um, just to be with my, my kids and my husband and us just building these memories together. But not only that, glorifying the father and recognizing him, because that's where we get communion from. Like they have the bread and the wine and we do this in remembrance of him. We do this in remembrance of what he did for us on the cross what he did for us as that Passover lamb. So like I said, we don't do Easter, but we do keep Passover. And that is the first biblical feast, the first biblical feast, which I think is amazing. The first feast of the whole year, which the new year starts around Passover because it starts in the spring. The New Year's is really in the spring. And that's why they call, that's why April Fool's is April Fool's because spring starts then where things are coming back to life. And to know that things are coming back to life, God gave us eternal life by his death, burial and resurrection as our Passover lamb. And yes, he was in the grave three days and three nights. I don't want to debate with nobody about it. He was just like he said, we would know the signs. He gave us signs and Jonah was the sign that he gave us. Just like Jonah was in the belly of the large fish for three days and three nights. So shall the son of man be in the earth. Three days, three full days, three full days. And, and, and this pastor, I, I'll never forget this guy said, like, think about it like this. If we can't get the number of the days right, like we can't get nothing right. But he said that what if you were to work, right, for three days and you only got paid for, for like a day and a half? Because we got Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning. So that's like a day and a half because he was crucified in like the afternoon time, right before the the evening, before the the next day started. Remember, I told you the next day starts in the evening and it's a new day. So before the next day, because he had to be crucified on Passover, because again, he was a Passover lamb. And I just think it's amazing, like how that even works, like how God even allowed all that to happen. But his number is three. That's that's hey, that's the 
complete number, the number of, of completeness. And I just love God that he, he did a complete work. And after, after he was in the grave, he became the first fruit and that's the next feast. But I don't want to get into the next feast on this video, but definitely if you want to learn more about the feast days and things of that nature, check out Passion for Truth. Um, and there are some other people too, but just put it in Google. This is something that me and my family have been doing for the last few years and it has been a blessing. It has truly been a blessing to really see the father in that way and continue to grow. Like that's what we're meant to do, to mature, to continue to grow because we don't stay babies forever in the physical, right? So the fact that we don't stay babies in the physical, we got to know that we have to mature spiritually, mentally, all those things as well. So like I said, this wasn't like coming down on anybody, but this was just me sharing the truth of God's word with you. So that way you can make a decision for yourself. What are you going to do? Are you going to turn a blind eye now that you know this knowledge or are you going to walk in truth? All right. I love you guys. And until next time. Yeah, we're done.